Peace family, Kanja Queen here. And in this segment, we are going to get into hair and spirituality and how the two are connected. So a lot of people don't realize this, but your hair is your spiritual antennas into the spiritual dimensions. So for instance, we have trees, right? Trees are like the antennas to the earth. They pick up signals and they also give off signals. Same with our hair. There's different hair types. There's different hair textures, different hairstyles, all types of things that deal with the hair, right? And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that the way that you maintain and manage your hair has a lot to do with your mental state like your mind state and also your spirituality. For instance, you'll notice that a person who has really messy hair, who doesn't take care of their hair, they don't wash their hair, they don't comb their hair, they just have matted hair, they don't do nothing to it, right? You'll notice that they either live very chaotic lives or their thoughts are really always scattered. You understand? Like for instance, you ever like missed a hair appointment, ladies are probably having back-to-back -back bad hair days and it's like you your whole mood is just off it's like you don't feel good but it's like as soon as you get your hair done and you looking like a superstar your hair's on fleek makeup on fleek everything's on fleek you feel good right it's because your hair has a lot to do with how you think and also how you feel because remember our hair is we admit we emit signals as well as we receive them. These are our antennas. And not just on a third dimensional level, but also on higher dimensional level, spiritual level. This is how we receive messages. And this is also how we give messages telepathically, not just to other human beings, but also telepathically to other dimensional beings, to plants, to animals, and other life forms. Like hair is a really powerful element um, in a spiritual world. And a lot of people, underestimate the power of hair you understand like um for instance the buddhist right in order to become a buddhist and to really get to really become serious they would the monks would shave off all of their body hair including all of the hair on their head because they believe that when you cut your hair you are cutting off your old ways. You are leaving behind the materialistic world and you are only solely focused on your spiritual elevation because hair is also tied into the material realm. A lot of people are so caught up on their hairstyle, how their hair makes them look. They get caught up in vanity that they forget the spiritual aspect of hair. So that is why the monks cut their hair off symbolizing I'm leaving that old me behind. I'm cutting off my hair symbolizing I'm cutting off my old ways. I'm starting off new. Right, ladies? Like, you ever notice, for instance, when a woman just got over a really bad breakup, we tend to do what? We cut our hair. We dye our hair. Or we change something about our hair. Why do we do that? Y'all seen Waiting to Exhale. Remember when, um, what's her name? Angela, she cut her hair off, right? She cut her hair because she was mad. She had long, beautiful hair. Everybody was mad that she cut her hair, but it just symbolized a revolutionary, a new her, a new me, right? So we, as women, we are very connected to our hair, and a lot of us can relate on the same level. It's just kind of like, oh, she just cut her hair. She just made a big leap, like she did the big chop. So you know it's like a, it's like a new beginning, a hair journey. For example, my hair, right? I The first time I got a relaxer was when I was like three or four years old. You understand? I was young. My mom, she was young too, so she didn't know how to manage my hair. And way back, you know, back in those days, they didn't really have like YouTube videos and a lot of the hair care products that we have now on, on the shelves for natural hair, for kinky hair. And I got some really kinky hair, y'all. I'm talking about like happily nappy kinky hair okay and my mom she just didn't know how to handle it so she just was like all right i'm just gonna is either i cut the hair or i perm it so she gave me a perm when i was three so long story short growing up like i never really got a chance to embrace and understand my true natural hair and this is the case with a lot of you know black african-american um afro-latina um melanated people who have kinky hair 
um, you know, society has forced us to believe that our natural kinks are ugly, but all reality is beautiful. It's unique. And actually spirally here also is, is it coordinates with the spirals of energy, right? Because energy spirals, right? And also does the coiling of our hair. It also spirals. That's that nine ether, baby. And only thing I'm saying is people who have kinkier hair tend to have a much stronger connection to source because the, the tighter the spirals, the easier it is to entrap and pull in energy, right? And y'all can research that. This is science. If you look at an electric bulb, um, a light bulb, you see when you look inside of a light bulb, it doesn't just have a straight wire. You notice that the wire is spiraling, right? Because that's the way that it conducts and releases energy so that you can have light. This is science. Okay, you can research this yourself. So just understand and not just the physical science of how energy works, but the metaphysical, the unseen force. And that's what this spirituality is all about. Here is such a powerful thing. Like the hair, like once I once I was going, once I decided that I wanted to cut my perm's hair off, I cut my perm's hair, when was it? In 2000 and 14, I believe it was 2014. I had cut off my hair. I did the big chop. And, you know, it was hard because it was like I identified with my long, straight hair. Like I was always known as the girl with the long, straight hair. Right? So when I cut that, it was like, in essence, I also cut off the old part of me because I wanted to, and like, as I began to step more into my spiritual path, I knew that. I would have to learn to love myself, all parts of myself, and get to know me better. And how can I get to know me better and go through the spiritual journey if I didn't even know what my hair texture was like? So that's why I had to do some more soul searching and meditation, figuring out what is the next step that I have to take, Spirit. And Spirit told me, Spirit was like, you're going to have to cut your hair. So I'm like, I'm not cutting my hair spirit, but lo and behold, what I ended up doing, I ended up doing the big chop in 2014. And let me tell y'all, when I had cut my hair and I went natural, let me tell you, the energy was so intense. I was picking up energy from the trees, from the sun, from the animals, from the insects, from the plants, um, telepathically from other human beings. I felt so sensitive to energy. It was just something new that I wasn't used to. It was just a different feeling that you would have to experience. I can't really express in words. It was just an experience that's like different. <laughs> it was just like a whole new world opened up for me. I started to understand and receive the language of the trees. I really felt like the trees and the plants were talking to me. And it was on a telepathic level. So it wasn't until I cut off my dead hair, which was my relaxed hair, and I started to allow my, my true natural hair to grow out, is when I really was able to start channeling um, spirit and channeling energy. And that's why they wanted me to cut my hair, because they were saying to me, look, you have a mission. We need you to deliver this message to people, but how can we convey the message to you if your antennas are damaged? I had damaged antennas. I had damaged my hair with the relaxers, with the perms, with the straightening and all of that. So they told me I had to cut my hair off and, and rebuild and repair my antennas. And once my antennas were repaired, I was able to receive these messages. So this is what I'm telling you. Ladies and fellas, your hair, your crown is your glory. Take care of your hair. Keep your hair clean so that you will have clean thoughts. Keep your hair detangled so that your thoughts will not be tangled up, okay? So that you won't be scatterbrained. It's good to comb through your hair, brush your hair, keep your hair clean, smelling good all the time because cleanliness is godliness. That's a fact. If your hair is messy, so will your life be messy. So will your thoughts be messy. You understand? All of this is related to hair. A lot of, some... Um, spiritual beliefs and certain cultures believe that if you cut your hair, you are also cutting off your power. You are cutting off your connection to source. That's why a lot of Buddhists or shamans, not Buddhists, excuse me, um, what they call them, the Brahmins, the ancients, the, the men who will go into the woods and just cut, the hermits, they will cut off themselves from society and just let their hair grow. They will let their locks grow out. Rastafarians done it. 
it's like you don't they're not supposed to cut their hair because they're supposed to allow that hair to grow um symbolizing that they're not cutting off their magic power also some witches and certain paths believe that if you was to cut your hair during a waning moon that you will lose your power but you're supposed to cut your hair during a waxing moon meaning when the moon is growing they also have a belief that if you want your hair to grow, you will cut your hair like you will cut your ends when the moon is growing, right? Between the new moon and the um the waxing moon and the full moon. But when you want your hair to remain short and you don't want your hair to grow back fast, you will cut your hair during the waning moon, and that's between the full moon and the the um the full moon and the waning moon, or the full moon and the new moon, the dead moon. So um moon cycles hair spirituality all of this stuff is connected and you can do your own research finding out more about like how hair is related to the spirit to your spirituality how like different what different cultures thought about hair cutting your hair dyeing your hair braiding your hair um i know a lot of people who told me like once they locked their hair that they also started picking up on a lot of energy. Locks pick up a lot of energy. But if, remember, if you're going to have locks, you have to be careful of the energies that you pick up. Okay? And speaking about energies that you pick up, don't let everybody touch your hair. Don't let everybody do your hair. Everybody shouldn't have their hands in your hair. I don't know about y'all, but a lot of people from the South, black people from the South, a lot of blacks, especially like the old Southern people from the South, they'll be like, look, baby, don't let everybody touch your hair. Don't comb your hair with everybody's comb. Don't brush your hair with everybody's brush. Don't do your hair at everybody's house. There's even, there's even a saying that you shouldn't allow a pregnant woman to do your hair because if a pregnant woman do your hair, your hair going to fall out. Okay, so black people, we have a whole bunch of sayings. I don't know where these sayings come from, but my grandmother was the queen of superstition. Like, she had a saying for everything. But all I know is those sayings somehow, some way, had truth to it. Because I remember somebody, um, a cousin a, a cousin of mine, a while ago, got her hair done by this pregnant girl, but she didn't know that the girl was pregnant. And lo and behold, her hair wasn't growing like it was. Her hair was falling out and all of that. And so my grandmother was like, see, I told you. Don't get your hair done by nobody that's pregnant. So after that, everybody just started listening to my grandmother. We don't know the logic behind it, but there's a saying that pregnant people shouldn't do your hair. I don't know why. But not just pregnant people. You shouldn't allow anybody to touch your hair. There's a reason why, like, once I cut my hair and I started going natural, I wanted to build a relationship with my hair. So I stopped going to the beautician. I used to always go to the Dominicans every, you know, every two weeks, go to the Dominicans, get my wash and my blowout and my wrap or whatever, my wash and set or whatever. But then it was like, you know what? Whenever you go to, like, different hairstylists and different people touching your hair, you notice that either your hair fall out, the texture's not the same, like, there's some people who have growing hands. And growing hands just basically mean that they have a lot of good energy. And when they touch your hair, your hair just tends to grow. Like, y'all ever find somebody, like, a, that one good hairstylist, and it's like, she's the only person that you go to? Even the fellas, there's, there's that one barber that you go to because you trust him. There's, like, a connection that you build. And you don't even realize why, but it's a spiritual connection that you build with that person because when they touch your hair... They're also becoming connected to you. It's almost as intimate as sex. There's an energy exchange where somebody touches your hair. So that's why for a lot of hairstylists, y'all also have to be wary of the, the clients that you take in, the clients that you choose to do whose hair, because if you doing different heads all the time, and let's say for instance, you know, um, you start feeling sick or nauseous or, you know, just having headaches and you don't even know why, nine times out of ten it's because you picked up the energy of one of your clients who probably didn't have good karma, or good, good energy around them. So if you're a hairstylist, a barber, you have to take extra caution into your spiritual cleansings and your protection. If you have to do hair, you probably can't wear rings when you're braiding and, you know, crocheting or cutting hair or whatever. So you probably have to take your rings off. Um, if you could wear bracelets, I would definitely recommend wearing bracelets, especially like hematite, obsidian, black tourmaline, the all and eye on your left wrist. That way you filter out what energy you absorb into your body. Okay? So take that into consideration. 
Um, also, just taking salt baths every now and then, every so often um, when you finish working out, working with the client. Sage your home. If you're doing work, if you do hair and stuff at home and you're cutting that hair and you got all those different people's energy in your house, you have to at least sage your house as soon as all your clients go. Matter of fact, you sage, you bless your house before the clients come in and you bless and sage your house when they leave out. So whatever energy they left there, it goes right out the door with them. Okay? So keep that in mind, especially when you're doing business at home where you lay your head to rest. You always want to make sure that your space is purified, consecrated, and blessed and protected. Okay? So don't let everybody touch your hair. Not everybody has good intentions for you. People who have negative energy will tend to make your hair fall out. This is a fact. Um, people will also transfer their energy to you. People touching your hair transfer their energy to you. And not only that, they steal your energy. We spoke about this in a previous video about psychic vampires. Some people are vampires and they don't even know it. You ever have a random person just walk up to you and start touching your hair like, oh my God, your hair is so pretty. And they just want to touch you like you a dog. It's okay to back them and tell them, no, excuse me, you can't touch my hair. You understand? There's nothing disrespectful about you put, having boundaries for yourself. You have to know your limits, have boundaries, and let people know you're not going to touch me. You're not going to touch me like a dog. You're not going to touch my head. Point blank, period. And if they don't understand it and they get an attitude because of that, then oh well. It's your hair. It's your body. And they have to respect your rules. Right? So, I'm telling y'all, man. These people... They will really try to steal your energy and all of that <coughs> if you let them respect your energy and they will learn to respect you. If you let people do whatever they want to do to you, they will treat you however they want to treat you. Have boundaries. Respect yourself. Okay. So we got into cleanliness. We got into don't let people touch your hair. Now we're going to get into wearing wigs. <clears throat> I still got this cough, y'all. Sorry. So, wearing wigs. Boom. I remember one of my subscribers had asked, was it okay to wear wigs um, doing spiritual work? A lot of the ancient Egyptians, the Kemites, wore wigs. Um, and I noticed this in history. Like Some people say that they shaved their head and they wore wigs. I feel like, me personally, wigs are cool. I don't have nothing against wigs. Um, nowadays they're making wigs that look like your hair. So, you know, if it's fashionable, if you like it, wear a wig. You know, if you don't feel like wearing hair wraps all the time, you can wear wigs. But this is what I'm saying. If you want to give your, yourself a break, because remember, like I said, your hair is your spiritual antennas. Some people I know, like if you work in a really hectic environment, like customer service, a call center, um, retail, and you're just dealing with a lot of hectic people, especially if you're working in like a hospital or something like that. You want to wrap your hair up. You understand? Get one of those like nice African print head wraps. Um, those white head wraps. It could be whatever that what whatever fashionable. Head wraps are so fashionable now, and they have a ton of YouTube videos teaching you how to style it, how to wrap your um wrap your head wraps and all of that. So check those out. Um, I would definitely say wear wigs and head wraps give you a break from like having your hair out. Especially if you're doing spiritual work. If you are a spiritualist like me and you do a lot of work for clients and you do a lot of readings, um, it's always good to cover your hair when you do your readings. If you're doing spiritual in the middle of doing a ceremony, lighting candles, doing rituals, um, it's advised to always cover your hair. Especially if you're doing like darker work, you're supposed to cover your hair. If you're doing work for other people, you're supposed to cover your hair. Um, especially if you're not washing your hair every day. Okay, like you want to cover your hair, give yourself a break. That way you filter out um, the energies that you're pulling in and pushing out. Because when you're doing the spiritual work, remember, spirit is communicating with you through your hair. Because your hair is directly connected to your head. This is why also you have to be careful with who gets your hair. You understand? Whenever I go get my hair done um, somewhere, like let's say I go to the beauty salon and I get my hair done and get my hair twisted... And the girl is combing my hair out. I ask her for every little strand that comes in that comb. I want my hair. And at first, you know, when I go to somebody new, they think I'm weird until, until I tell them why. I make I'll be like, oh, well, I like my hair because I like to burn it. It makes my hair grow, which is another saying that black people do. They say, don't put your, don't, um, don't take your hair and throw it in a garbage can because if the birds get to it, it can make you go crazy. If a bird, if a bird makes 
a nest out of your hair, they say that it will make you go mad. Like your, your, your thoughts will be all scattered. So that's why we take our hair, we flush it in the toilet or we burn it. And they say if you burn your hair, then your hair will grow, right? And it's also a way to make sure nobody gets to it. So anyway, when I go to the salon, I make sure that I get my hair and I take my hair home with me and I do what I want to do with it. Because I'm not going to leave my hair somewhere where anybody could walk all over it and do what they want to my hair. You crazy? Especially now that I'm living in New Orleans, I'm especially careful with who do my hair and where my hair going. I don't play that. Because if a person gets your hair, they can start messing with your thoughts. Right? They start messing with the way you think, the way you, everything, your life. You mess up somebody's mind, you got their mind, you got their body, right? Be careful with who gets your hair. Also, um, we already talked about the, the tangling your hair. Make sure that your hair is not tangled up. Tangled hair leads to tangled up thoughts. Your thoughts will not be clear. Your mind will be all jumbled and you won't be able to, to think clearly, speak clearly, or do things clearly. You'll be all over the place having scattered thoughts, starting a whole bunch of projects, not being able to finish it, okay? Comb out your hair, comb out the kinks, and just you'll have clearer thoughts. Trust me. Management of your hair is very important. Keeping your hair clean, neat, managed will do you wonders. Okay? And also, just a little trick, a little tip that I have for y'all. I like to add little, like, gold and copper in my hair because copper and, and gold amplifies energy. It conducts energy stronger and faster. So adding elements to your hair also amplifies your energy. I love wearing like copper jewelry and stuff like that anyway. So when you put it in your hair, put it on your locks or your twists, your um, your natural hair, whatever, it amplifies it times 10 or probably more. So you might be more sensitive to energies, but it also amplifies you. So you may notice that you might be more magnetic or more people will stare at you on the street. You'll catch more people's attention. You understand? Because it's something about your aura. It will make your aura much bigger. So that's pretty much it, guys, as far as spirituality and hair. I think I covered everything. If there are some things that you feel like I did not cover, drop them down in the comment section. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section. Um, and yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, we'll be making more videos soon. If you feel like it's a topic that I didn't cover here um, or a certain topic that you want me to cover, also drop that in the comment section and we want to get down to that. So anyway, guys, I got to go. It is Monday and I'm about to do my 16 penny ritual. All right. Get these money blessings, honey. So Conja Queen signing out. Until next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>